All right, moving to a new city or a new state is always going to be a little bit intimidating. There's a lot of things to learn. There's a lot of things to know and maybe some reasons why you might wanna reconsider moving to a particular area. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the reasons why maybe somebody would decide not to move to Portland, Oregon. So stay tuned to learn more. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with The Home Team Brokers coming to you from Portland, Oregon. In this video, we're going to talk about 10 reasons why maybe you should reconsider moving to Portland, Oregon. Now, I know for a lot of people watching this video and a lot of the clients that we've helped relocate to Portland and, and move to Oregon, um, you know, reconsidering isn't necessarily an option. You know, maybe you've been relocated here uh, by your work. Maybe you have family here that's bringing you here, um, or maybe it is a place that you have sought out. Now we see a, a number of those, uh, you know, circumstances, uh, you know, ob obviously everybody's story is a little bit different, but again, you know, moving to a new place is going to be really intimidating. And if you are thinking about moving to Portland, or if it is something that looks very likely, we're gonna talk about some of the reasons why it might not always be so rosy in the Rose City. Now, the first thing we'll talk about is affordability. So you're on the West Coast, you know, if you're on the West Coast or East Coast, you know, the coastal cities, coastal states are going to be more expensive pretty much across the board when you look at every major category from housing to groceries, to utilities, to transportation, fun, entertainment, you know, everything down the line. Oregon and the Portland metro area does tend to be quite a bit more affordable than a lot of places on the West Coast when you put it up against Seattle or San Francisco or LA, uh, you know, San Diego. So, you know, you go down the line, Portland is going to actually be the most affordable major city on the West Coast. And when you look at all of the major categories, aside from housing, we're really kind of on par with the national averages. Some things are a little more expensive. Some things are actually a little bit more affordable. But when you look at housing, we're anywhere from 30 to 50% more expensive than the national average uh, for housing. So whether that's purchasing a home or rent. So, you know, if you're coming from maybe one of those other major cities on the West Coast or somewhere on the East Coast, you know, Portland might look a little bit more affordable, but to a lot of people and a lot of people that we've worked with coming from, whether it be Texas or the Midwest, somewhere else in the country, you know, Portland can seem quite a bit more expensive or is quite a bit more expensive when you look at purchasing a home. So a starter home, across the board i mean there's definitely exceptions you know to everything in some areas that are a little more expensive and some areas that are a little more affordable but a starter home is typically going to be somewhere around 500 to 550 thousand dollars now we're looking at you know less than 1500 square feet three bedrooms maybe one and a half two baths something like that you know maybe something that is a little bit older or has a smaller lot. I mean, there's gonna be some sacrifices probably when you're kind of getting into that entry price point. And when you start looking at four bedroom homes, I mean, you're really starting about $650,000, again, depending on the area and everything, but $650,000 for kind of a move up house, a little bit larger, four bedrooms, really is kind of that entry level. So it's not until you get up to about seven hundred to $800,000 where you can start finding a pretty good selection of four bedroom homes, maybe five bedroom homes with a little more space, uh, a yard, you know, in some of the more sought after suburbs, neighborhoods, things like that. So again, it's all going to be relative depending on where you're coming from. But when you look at national averages, you know, Portland definitely is going to be a lot more expensive for housing. Now, if this is your first time to the channel or you've been here and you haven't already and you want to get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. And we've helped so many people relocate to Oregon and move to the Portland metro area. As real estate professionals, we love to help with that process. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. Either way, we would love to help with your move to Portland. And those prices are really gonna to vary too, right? Depending on your circumstance. So down payment, what you would like your monthly payment to be, you know, 
a $550,000 house at a 2.5% interest rate is a lot different than, you know, the same price at a 6.5% interest rate, right? So we haven't seen home values come down nearly as much as we've seen interest rates rise. So payments are a lot more expensive now. We are seeing a lot of people making sacrifices uh, a little bit here and there uh, as far as what they're getting, you know, where the list of needs and wants, you know, maybe has... Uh, gotten cut into a little bit. Um, and that's okay. I mean, there's certainly things that if you approach this with an open mind, as far as areas that you're looking at and things that you're looking for in a home, we can certainly find something within your price range. Um, and you know, the market's ever changing, right? So who knows what interest rates are going to look like in the near or far future. All right. So the next thing is lot sizes and in particular, smaller lot sizes. So, you know, you, you have a lot of different dynamics in Portland, in the city center and around Portland, in Portland proper, you have kind of an urban residential mix and then you get out into the suburbs and then it continues to sprawl, you know, to the edge of the urban growth boundary. But within Portland, it's really, really dense where the residential areas are. So if you're buying a house in Portland proper, odds are your lot is going to be really pretty small. There are some areas where you can get lots that are a little bit bigger, you know, but you're probably looking at 5,000, 6,000 square feet, something like that. So, you know, you might have a little bit uh, of a lawn, you might be able to have a patio or a little deck, a place where you can do some outdoor entertaining or where the kids can go out and play in the yard, something like that. But in the city, you know, your lots are definitely going to be a lot smaller. Now, just on the outskirts of Portland proper into some of the older suburbs like a Gresham or a Beaverton into Tigard a little bit, even Lake Oswego, you can get quite a few options where you have 8,000 maybe up to 10,000 square foot lots, like quarter acre lots, where depending on the size of your home, you're gonna have a pretty big yard, a pretty, you know, a pretty big space there and a little bit more room to breathe. Now, anything that's been developed in the past 40 years, you know, you're looking at probably 6,000 to maybe 8,000 square foot lot. So definitely noticeably smaller, especially because, you know, as more and more development and building went on in the past 30, 40 years, a lot of these houses that were being built were bigger. So, you know, the lots were getting a little bit smaller, the homes were getting a little bit bigger, leaving you less yard and less space, you know, ar around the house and around the perimeter. So, you know, depending on what you're looking for, I think a lot of people really do want to have at least a little bit of space and a little bit of room to breathe. Um, and if you look at anything built in the last five, 10, really up to even 20 years, you're looking at really, really small lot sizes. So you could have a 3000 square foot house on a 5000 square foot lot, leaving very little space, you know, for a yard. Now, easy for maintenance, right? You know, you're not going to be doing a ton of yard work and landscaping if you have a really small lot and yard, but most people, again, don't want to feel super crammed in and you can get that in a lot of areas that have been developed more recently. So there, again, there's some different dynamics the further away you get from the city. There's definitely areas uh, and age of homes in particular where you can find larger lots, but some of those older suburbs, yes, uh, but really it's not until you get you know, further out into the outskirts of that urban growth boundary in areas like Oregon City, Happy Valley, Hillsboro, Sherwood, where you can find maybe a larger volume of homes with larger lots. All right, so next it's gonna be home maintenance. Home maintenance is a big issue in Portland, in the Portland metro area, and really in the Pacific Northwest in particular for homes that are a little bit older. So when you're shopping for homes, it's very clear, very easy to see just by doing a tour uh, if a home has some deferred maintenance. And a lot of issues are going to come about because of all the moisture that we get. You know it rains here, so no secret there, uh, but roofs, siding, exterior, windows, crawl spaces, basement, I mean, all of these areas are susceptible to moisture intrusion, you know, flooding, uh, rotting out wood. So whether that's on your siding or the framing of a window or a door, water in your crawl space, that can cause a ton of issues. So these are all issues that if there is not some level of ongoing maintenance happening, these are going to become a problem. And so depending on where you're coming from, 
that might not necessarily be something that you're used to. So when you're out shopping for homes, <laughs> you might see some of these issues. You might see a lot of these things come up in an inspection when you go to purchase a home. So that's something that you're up against right away, potentially, but it's also something that as a homeowner, you really need to be on top of. So again, you know, your roof, all of your exterior, making sure that water can't get in and there's, and there's not areas where moisture can get into the home because if it does, again, especially over a long period of time, that can cause major issues. Just this last winter, I went down into my crawl space to check something out and there's this vapor barrier, so this visqueen, right, that's on, uh, on the dirt, on the earth. So I get down into the crawl space and I start feeling around and it's like a water balloon. You know, there, there's a ton of water underneath my house, underneath this visqueen, and we have a sump pump, so that's a, a system that actually pumps the water out of the house, which is something that if you have this issue, you definitely should have, but I have no idea how long this issue had gone on for. I had probably hadn't been under my house in a couple of years, so, you know, definitely very surprising. Had to get a company come out that does all the crawl space work, that came out, replaced the sump pump, and you know, depending on how much work they're doing, what kind of system they're installing, I mean, relatively affordable, especially compared to, you know, the issues that it can cause if left untreated. So, you know, again, this is something that is very real and something that you would definitely wanna be prepared for moving to Portland. All right, next, another thing is downtown Portland. Now, downtown Portland over the years, decades, I mean, has, has, its, has had its ups and downs, you know, had its issues. I'm sure that no matter where you are at in the country, you've seen some things about Portland in the news uh, in, in recent history. So there's certainly a reputation there. A lot of those issues that you hear about for sure exists, so it's it's not hard to notice if you just spend a little bit of time downtown Portland and in the city. The, the homelessness, you know, some of the shuttered windows and doors, broken glass, litter, graffiti, all that kind of stuff, you know, where there are very clear signs that there are issues here that aren't necessarily being addressed. So definitely a lot of truth to that. Everybody's tolerance is a little bit different. Spending time downtown in the city, still great, still fun. There's still a lot to do for sure. And I don't think it holds that many people back going out to dinner, going out to get a drink, going out to an event, going to see a play, going to a museum, whatever it may be, all the fun things that you can do in Portland. And a lot of people still get out and do that, but downtown Portland definitely has its issues. But the other side of that too is Portland's a pretty small city. So we talked about comparing Portland to a lot of other cities on the West Coast or other cities around the country. And Portland's just a smaller city. There's not as much to do at as high a volume as you get in even some cities that are of a comparable size. So, you know, like Portland and Austin, for example, pretty similar in size, but Austin, you know, is this big destination uh, that has so much fun stuff to do. And, you know, it's a really fun, cool city. Portland has a lot of great stuff to do too, but I think for a lot of people, and depending on where you're coming from, can be a little bit underwhelming. Regionally too, there's not a lot of other big cities that you can get out and do and go see. So like on the East Coast, if you're like in the Northeast in New England or New York, uh, Philadelphia, you're gonna be able to, able to get to other big cities pretty quickly on a train or driving. So there's a lot more that you can get out and do and see you know, in a relatively short distance. I mean, Portland, we have Seattle. It's about a three hour drive to the north. It's really not that far. Uh, but again, coming from like a California or a Texas where you have a lot of big cities and major cities and other things that you can get out and do and see, Portland is a little more isolated in that way too. So if you're looking for a city that's a little more laid back, maybe doesn't have all the glitz and glam and a ton of things to do, Portland's gonna suit you well. All right, next, everything is seasonal here. So we get all four seasons you know, at full force. So winter can be really cold, it's wet, it's rainy, it's gray. I mean, it's pretty mild compared to some places up north. So we don't have snow on the ground for long durations. Some winters it barely snows at all, but we definitely have freezing temperatures. We definitely deal with ice. And there's definitely long stretches of the year where it's a lot harder to get outside and do things. You know, on the other hand, uh, on the other end of that spectrum in the summer, I mean, there's definitely at least a couple months, you know, maybe six weeks of the summer where it gets really hot. And especially because we live in a pretty mild pocket in terms of temperature, maybe 40 to 60 degrees, when we get long stretches of days that are like, 
90, 95, and over 100, that feels really hot. So a lot of people stay inside when it gets really hot too, and you know maybe get out in the mornings or, or evenings, but at any rate, when you're looking at activities that you like to engage in, in particular hobbies and some of the more expensive hobbies, you know, things that you might be really passionate about and, you know, maybe invest a lot of resources into gear and just, you know, the time spent doing it. Uh, you're not necessarily going to be able to do it year round, whether that is mountain biking or boating or golfing. Uh, a lot of these things, again, you just have this pocket of the year, this stretch of the year where it's perfect, but the rest of the year, you know, you, you gotta keep it locked up in the garage. Now, don't get me wrong, I've played plenty of December and January and February rounds of golf for sure. So you could definitely get a 40 degree day. You know, maybe it's not raining or it's not super windy. Maybe there's a little drizzle, whatever it may be. You can still get out and play golf. Boating is gonna be a little bit different, right? You know, so if you're getting out on the water to maybe go fishing, I mean, you can kind of do that year round, uh, but getting out on the boat, you know, wakeboarding, uh, water skiing, things like that. Obviously, you're only going to be able to do that for a few months out of the year, for example. So, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do year round, but if it's way too hot or way too cold, it's a lot harder to do that. All right, next is the new construction. So definitely some good and some bad with that. I mean, we've seen historical growth in home values over the past few years because demand has been so high, uh, but the supply just hasn't been there to meet demand, right? So we really need builders to build homes both in Portland and Oregon, but also on a national level. I mean, there's a housing shortage across the board. So, you know, when we're seeing more housing starts, more land being developed, uh, you know, for residential uh, homes, condos, townhomes, whatever it may be, we need all of that stuff. So that for sure is good. Plus a lot of people really like new construction. So they like the idea of getting into a house that was just built brand new materials, not a scratch, not a ding, no issues, no deferred maintenance, you know, like, you can see a lot of with older homes in this area. Uh, a lot of people really like new construction, but you know there are some issues that come with that. When you're buying new construction, you're probably moving into a neighborhood that's still growing and still developing. So there's gonna be some congestion, there's gonna be some noise, you're gonna see big machines and you know homes being built and what it looks like today is not what it's gonna look like in five, 10, 15 years. Uh, and that's not just because of the vacant land and the homes that are still being built, but the landscaping too. So a lot of these areas, you know, get cleared out, all the vegetation gets cleared out, you know, trees get cut down and everything gets replanted. So, you know, you go through a lot of these new developments and, and new communities where, you know, there's not a tree that's taller than five, six feet. And in Portland, you know, and, and in Oregon and the Pacific Northwest, and, and something that a lot of people really love about it is all of the big mature trees. And there's so many suburbs and neighborhoods of Portland where you have big mature trees lining the streets and in your backyard, you have a tree line in your backyard. Everywhere you look, it's kind of like you're living in this, you know, big urban forest. So that's really cool, right? And you don't get that dynamic nearly as much in some of the areas that are being more newly developed. All right, next thing, and something that we've kind of talked about already is the public perception of Portland. So Portland has this perception of a place where there are riots in the street every day and you know businesses in the city are getting looted and windows are getting smashed and there's homeless people on every corner and crime is running rampant. And depending on your politics and what you subscribe to and listen to, Portland is this you know, crazy communist place that is just you know, com completely out of sorts and out of order. Um, now, again, and like we talked about, for sure there's issues. And there are issues that are really bad. I mean, especially when you look at like on a per capita basis, right? So a lot of major cities, a lot of big cities around the country have a lot of issues, for sure. Whether it's crime, drug use, homelessness, and Portland probably has it worse, you know, than some larger cities in the country. I mean, I, there, there's so many ways to, to look at this and measure this. I try to be optimistic, for sure. I try to look at where we're going, what's being done about it, you know, what the solutions are. 
you know, so from my perspective, and when you hear me talk about this stuff, you know, I'm 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 not painting it in a negative light intentionally, and that's not just because I'm a realtor and helping people relocate to Portland. Uh, I, I want to give as realistic a perspective as possible, but it's also because I live here and I was born and raised here, and I'm not going anywhere. So. You, you know, looking at it through that lens, I mean, you have to identify the issues and identify what the potential solutions are and, and make sure, you know, that, you know, when you're going to vote or, you know, how you're spending your time, if there's anything you can do just, you know, to ensure that we are collectively working toward a solution. So I digress off on a tangent a little bit there. Either way, Portland, you know, has a stigma and there is a reputation and it's not a great reputation. You know, we're known for a lot of great stuff and cool stuff and, and all of that is true as well. But when you move to Portland, you know, if you have a job where you are speaking with people around the country, for example, I had a job for about 10 years, you know, my first job out of college that I had for a long time uh, was a, a, an account manager uh, doing marketing, social media marketing. And I talked to a lot of people around the country. And this was even before like COVID and, you know, the George Floyd stuff and a lot of stuff that's happened in the last two, three, four years. You know, people are like, oh my gosh, you live in Portland? Like, wow, is, like, are you okay? Like, is are, are you safe? And, you know, you just kind of have to explain to people, look, I mean, there's what the media says and then there's actually what people are seeing in their day-to-day -day life who actually live here. And you know, a lot of the issues that we've talked about are isolated to specific areas. The Portland metro area, when you look at the suburbs and the entire landmass of the Portland metro area is enormous. And there's a ton of places that you can live where, you know, all of these little things that people talk about or think of when they think of Portland are completely non-existent. So um, just prepare to have to you know, really explain yourself to, you know, whether it is like clients or friends and family, people that you talk to who don't live here, who aren't local, um, what it's actually like. All right, moving on. So next is the congestion. So Portland uh, has really bad traffic and there's no way around that. So, you know, we're, we're consistently ranked for having some of the worst traffic in the country. Like we talked about, and as you probably know, Portland is a relatively small city, kind of a mid-sized city, um, decent-sized metro area. Uh, so there are a lot of people here uh, when you look at, you know, beyond Portland, and a lot of people commute, a lot of people bike and take public transportation, and that's really cool, but a lot of people commute. And a lot of people might live, you know, on one side of the Portland metro area and work in another, or vice versa. So most everybody drives, and especially during like rush hour morning um, and evening, but even on the weekends, congestion can get really bad. I, I mean, I, I think we have probably sufficient amount of uh, highways and freeways you know, that people can access relatively easily, but there are a ton of bottlenecks that get created. And that might be because maybe we don't have enough lanes, you know, maybe we do need another freeway. Uh, a lot of people even avoid the freeways and try to take, you know, little shortcuts and, and you know, back cuts and things like that. And so a lot of the smaller roads and streets can get really congested and backed up. And uh, I just, uh, out of principle, never like cutting through people's neighborhoods. I wouldn't want that uh, if, I lived in a neighborhood that had, you know, access kind of as a throughway, you know, so I always kind of stay on the main roads and highways, but a lot of people cut through back roads and neighborhoods and that just creates more congestion ultimately. And we live in a landscape, you know, and with a topography where there are mountains and rolling hills and winding roads and you have to cross rivers and bodies of water. And so that all creates bottlenecks too. So some of the major freeways and highways like highway 26 goes up and over the west hills i5 has the twirliger curves so it's really windy so you know whereas the speed limit might be 55 60 miles an hour you know around a lot of these corners especially when traffic is really heavy people are you know slowing down to take the corner to like 35 miles an hour and that creates you know a chain reaction so you know that don't need to explain to you how traffic works, but that's, you know, at least in Portland, why probably we have some of the worst traffic in the country. So if you're moving here, even if you're coming from like LA or places that notably have like some of the worst traffic, uh, you'll probably be surprised uh, moving here how bad the traffic can be. All right, next we have the Portland freeze. So you may have heard of the Seattle freeze. Um, this is something that is definitely borrowed from Seattle and it's probably just a Pacific Northwest thing overall, but 
the Seattle freeze is referring to basically the overall kind of demeanor and maybe attitude or how people carry themselves and how they engage or interact with people. And typically that's going to be pretty cold, not a ton of emotion, and maybe less cynically, it's just people aren't as outgoing, aren't as extroverted, a little more introverted. You're definitely going to get that in Portland too. So I think that reputation you know, that Seattle has with that Seattle freeze, you definitely hear about the Portland freeze as well. And I think that the people here are generally friendly and polite, but you're probably not going to run into too many people who are super outgoing and super extroverted like you would in an area like, at least, you know, from my perspective, anybody I've ever met from the Bay Area is just like in your face, you know, very talkative, very extroverted. I think we're for sure the opposite of that. And, you, you know, you, you can't speak for millions of people, um, you, you know, just with one stereotype. Obviously, everybody's a little bit different and there's, a, you know, there's a big range and spectrum as far as people's personalities and the people that live here. But, it's noticeable enough on a regular basis to where it for sure is a thing. And I don't, I mean, I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know if it's, you know, people kind of staying indoors more because of the rain and the cold at times, uh, who knows, but it definitely is a thing. And it is something that I have heard people say that, you know, when they move to Portland, they have found it a little bit harder to maybe break into friend groups or make new friends or just to kind of make connections with a lot of people. Just because I think a lot of people are pretty reserved, pretty quiet, and tend to be a little more on the introverted introverted end of the spectrum. Uh, now, one of the places you'll probably notice it the most is out at a restaurant. Now, there are a ton of great restaurants in Portland. Portland is known as definitely a foodie capital. Uh, in the US for sure. So, you know, you're going to get uh, varying degrees of service, you know, from restaurant to restaurant. But overall, you go out to eat somewhere and it, it's very noticeable how unfriendly the wait staff can be. Nobody serves water anymore. I mean, some places do, but pretty much anywhere you go now, you ask for water, they just point at a little water station to make you get up and, and go get it. Uh, and, you know, you're just not getting a lot of friendly engagement. I don't know what it is. And again, this isn't every you know waiter in uh, in Portland or in the Portland metro area by any means, but there's definitely like a noticeable Portland freeze when it comes to wait staff at a lot of places. So I don't know when you move here, you'd be the judge. All right, next and finally, Portland is shrinking. So you know you might ask yourself, why would people or why would you move to a city that is losing people, a place where people are moving away from? Well, it's tough to say what the trajectory is. So since 1984 up to 2021, Portland had a net positive migration. So the population was growing due to people moving in. And last year in 2022, we had a net negative migration. We lost 16,000 people in a city of about 650,000 people. Um, now keep in mind too, the metro area has over like two and a half million people here in the metro area. So you know, relatively small number. And again, you have to look at what the trajectory is. We had 40 years of positive growth and then, you know, one, one year, you know, that moving in the other direction, that doesn't necessarily say that we're gonna have 40 years, you know, for the next 40 years, the population is going to decline. Portland has a really strong job market. There are a lot of things that bring people to the area, the natural beauty, outdoor activities, the ocean, the mountain, the food, all of the things that you know you probably know about Portland and maybe some of the reasons that you know and some of the things that have attracted you to the area as well i mean those things are still here those things still do exist for sure so it's tough to say exactly what has led to it a lot of people will point to a lot of the issues that we've talked about in this video with Portland in particular. I think one thing you need to look at though too is when you look at Portland and Multnomah County having a net negative migration, a lot of people are just moving out to the suburbs um, or out to the country to more rural areas that are still within you know, 30, 40, 45 minutes drive of downtown Portland. So it's not like people are necessarily trying to flee and, and get as far away as they can necessarily. Uh, but I've talked to plenty of people who, you know, they're moving to Idaho, they're moving to Texas, they're moving to places that maybe are a little more in line with, you know, how they see the world and, and how they think about things. And either way, and I guess the point being is, I think the future of Portland, short term in particular, is 
a little bit up in the air, you know, as far as how we're going to solve some of the issues that we have, how we're going to continue to invest in our future and invest in local infrastructure and the local economy and bring in businesses and, you know, ultimately bring in people and, you know, contribute to the things that would turn that statistic back around where we start seeing positive growth. Another thing too that you don't necessarily hear about when you see that statistic is Portland has a relatively low birth rate. So uh, part of that, as far as the, the net change in population, not specifically just tied to migration, uh, but Portland has a, a lower birth rate. So, you know, the replacement isn't there as much as it maybe was in the past. So that's going to, con you know, contribute to, you know, how that number might fluctuate. So Either way, I think that if you are thinking about moving to Portland and you're looking into some of the reasons why maybe you shouldn't or maybe you should reconsider, I mean, all the things we talked about on this list and, and probably dozens more, uh, are, there's certainly reasons that will present themselves and everybody's different. Everybody's preferences are different. Everybody's lifestyle is different as far as what they want, what their priorities are. But for sure, you know, whether it's the job that you got or are looking for or just things about Portland that you like, those things are here as well. So that's why we spend a lot of time talking about the pros and the cons. And we for sure want people to know really what a lot of those cons are and make sure people have a clear perspective and big picture perspective as to what it's actually like living here. So if you are thinking about moving to Portland and you wanna learn more about Portland itself, the metro area, the suburbs, talk about the pros and cons, what it's like living here, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. And on that call, we can talk about your lifestyle, your hobbies, you know, what your preferences are, put together a game plan for you so we can start talking about you know, your home search and your budget and your timeline and really hit the ground running when the time comes. Now, if this video is helpful, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you want to get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap that little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. As always, we really appreciate you watching. And until next time, we'll talk to you later.